we extend a special welcome to those who are single, married, divorced, gay, filthy rich, dirt poor, no habla anglais. We extend a special welcome to those who are crying newborns, skinny as a rail, or could afford to lose a few pounds. We welcome you if you can sing like Andrea Bocelli, or like our pastor who can't carry a note in a bucket. You're welcome here if you are just browsing, just woke up, or just got out of jail. We don't care if you're more Catholic than the Pope, or haven't been in church since little Joey's baptism. We extend a special welcome to those who are over 60, but not grown up yet, and to teenagers who are growing up too fast. We welcome soccer moms, NASCAR dads, starving artists, tree huggers, latte sippers, vegetarians, junk food eaters. We welcome those who are in recovery or still addicted. We welcome you if you're having problems or you're down in the dumps, or if you don't like organized religion. We've been there too. If you blew all your offering money at the dog track, you're welcome here. We offer a special welcome to those who think the earth is flat, work too hard, don't work, can't spell, or because grandma's in town and wanted to go to church. We welcome those who are inked, pierced, or both. We offer a special welcome to those who could use a prayer right now, had religion shoved down your throat as a kid, or got lost in traffic and wound up here by mistake. We welcome tourists, seekers and doubters, bleeding hearts, and you. And you. And you. And you. Welcome to Christ Church. Thank you for joining us in Sunday morning worship. We're happy you are here. Good morning. I welcome you to Christ Church as we gather virtually and online. Uh, we welcome you to this uh, celebration uh, of our Lord's uh, resurrection. Uh, we're going to begin this morning with our prayer. Oh God, your son Jesus Christ promised to be with us whenever we gather together in his name. We thank you for Christ Church and the love that holds us together. Make us eager to gather for worship. Inspire us to learn and grow spiritually as individuals, and as a faith community. We seek knowledge of your will for us. We pray for the strength and courage, the wit and wisdom, and the humor and creativity to follow Jesus, love people, and change the world. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. 
who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, his, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. A reading from Peter's first letter, chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. You, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, 
and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in, the, in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today's reading from the book of Acts, uh, Paul has got himself into trouble with the Roman authorities because he is proclaiming a God that is not one of their gods. And so Paul gets called to the Aragopagus, and uh, which he is called to explain himself. And Paul, um, in trying to um, talk about the God that he is proclaiming and knows in Jesus Christ, he says to the people, you know, I have been around your city, and I have seen that you're a religious people. I have seen the shrines and the statues and the temples to various gods, and I even noticed one that is an unnamed God. I know that God, and that is the God that I proclaim. Now, Paul gets himself out of trouble in this speech, but I think that there's something for us to learn as Christians about Paul's engagement with the culture in proclaiming the gospel. Paul does not sit there and bash them. Paul invites them to understand something that is deep within them a spirituality and a trust and a belief. And God is behind all of that, Paul says. I think oftentimes we as Christians, we get ourselves into trouble because we see ourselves ultimately at conflict with the world around us. We see ourselves at conflict with those who believe differently than we believe. We see ourselves as in conflict um, with those who have different traditions that we do. And I think that we need to be like Paul and first understand deeply our own beliefs, practices, and traditions. Because as Christians, we believe that God has revealed something unique to the world in Christ Jesus. But also is a deep understanding of the world in which we live and move and have our being. And how this can become an invitation for people to understand and to appreciate the God that we believe and trust in. That we don't have to be at battle and at war with the wider culture, but rather we can meet people where they are and accompany them into the truth that leads to eternal life. N.T. Wright in his book, Simply Christian, says that there are four sort of echoes um, that we find in this world that, that people get um, just intuitively that we as Christians can point to that point to something that is bigger than ourselves. I think about a movie that came out several years ago called August Rush. 
And August is this amazing musician. And August um, has this line towards the end of the movie in which he says, just listen for the music. It is all around us. Likewise, what Paul is hearkening to is, is just stop and listen because God is all around us. So what are these four echoes? What are these four voices that we should listen to? Wright says that the first one is this call to justice. This call to justice. Like, like we know that there are things that are not right in the world. That we know that there are things which at the very core of the human, at the human soul uh, violates and breaks trust with one another and trust with a higher power. And that that sense of justice, that call to be a better person, is something that we should affirm and also say that we too agree that, that, that this violation of justice, this violation of right. But the problem with human justice is, is that one, we often lie to ourselves and think that we can bring justice alone. Following World War II, in which the world discovered the atrocities that happened in the Holocaust, the common refrain was never, never again. And yet, post-Holocaust, time and time again, the world has experienced and seen other Holocausts happen. The mass elimination of people in wars around this world, that despite how hard we try, we alone cannot bring about this justice. We live in a culture now, in this American culture, which is focused on what many people call the call-out and the cancel culture, in which what we do is we have retribution and we have punishment upon those who violate our sense of justice, that we know how to punish, but we don't know how to bring grace, forgiveness, and reconciliation. And this is the very thing that God offers us in Jesus Christ to a world that seems at times to be falling apart, Paul tells us that in Christ Jesus, all things are being reconciled to one another and to God. That this passion for justice, that God's passion for justice, that is spread throughout the Holy Scriptures, is a passion that we should have also, but understand that ultimate justice ultimate righteousness and ultimate healing comes not from our own endeavors but from God's. Paul said, or, or excuse me, N.T. Wright says too that in addition to this sense of justice there is a deep spirituality. There's something right now that is popular to say that I am spiritual but not religious. And what this means is is that we have some sort of deep sense that we need to have meaning and rituals in our lives and in fact um, there are companies out there who will customize rituals for you for a price. That many of the rituals that we used to do in the church have been handed over to the consumer culture. Weddings and funerals are now under the purview of people who can create the ultimate meaning for a price. But this deep concern and desire for meaning and for a search for truth is deep within the human soul. We can look at the um, rise of interest in New Age mysticism. We can look at fundamentalism in all of its forms and the self-help culture that surrounds our modern society as all ways of trying to grapple with what, where, and how do we find meaning in life that we realize that, the, that, that there are things in the world that are so damaged and so broken that we need something beyond ourselves in order to bring meaning and truth and hope. Now, obviously, we as Christians would say that we ultimately find that in Christ Jesus. But what's interesting is, is like C.S. Lewis C.S. Lewis says that in, in fiction, we can often find these deep spiritual truths. And this is why um, he wrote science fiction and fantasy as a way of grappling and making real um, these deep hopes that human society has. And, and in fact, Lewis says that, that all of our wrestlings, all of our wrestlings with these things are ultimately a wrestling with the God who created us and saved us. Third, Wright says is, is that we have a deep human desire for relationship 
and for connection. There's something strange about human beings in which we ache for relationships. We, we, we have a strong desire for it, but yet so often we are so bad at relationships. I don't want to get too personal, but I think about even my own marriage, somebody who I love with my entire heart, soul, and mind, and the times in which I fall short and I hurt. Sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally, but there is something within our relationships that both draws us together and pushes us away. We find in the very beginning of Scripture and the story of Genesis that when God has created Adam and created all of these animals to be with Adam, Adam is not yet complete by himself. And so God makes a helper, someone to accompany Adam in life. I think this story points to something that is deep within us, that we desire human relationship with one another. We can look at our social media as a, as a broken and flawed way, and yet a very powerful way in which we can create and build relationships and friendships. The fourth thing is, is that uh, Wright says that there is an appreciation for beauty. Now, of course, um, a lot of times what we consider to be beautiful can be defined by the wider culture that we, we are a part of, right? So, so there's things that I may try to wear in clothing that may be out of style, and the wider culture says, you know, I, three years ago, that was a really beautiful, you know, shirt, but today, yeah, it's really out of style, So beauty is not something that is necessarily a constant, at least the way that we oftentimes experience it. Wright shares in his book, Simply Christian, um, that there was this Australian man who was doing a search in an attic, and he comes across this piece of music. And he, as he looks at it and he examines it, he thinks that he has found a lost piece of Mozart's music. And he begins to play it, and in fact, he realizes that he has discovered a lost part of Mozart's music. There were parts within there that were intended for other instruments. That there are things that are missing in Mozart's music that he found, and so we don't have a sense of the whole. And I think that's a great illustration for our own sense of beauty, that there are touches of it, we see it, we get glimpses of it, but we don't get the full picture. This Sunday is oftentimes called Rogation Sunday. It's a Sunday um, in which um, cultures that were built upon agriculture would, be, would celebrate the begin um, of the spring harvest and the spring planting. That there is something that we as Christians and the people of the book have saw that, that beauty and creation Um, go hand in hand. And so one of the top ways in which we often say that we experience the beauty of God is through seeing the wider creation. And so as Christians, we have a duty to protect and to care for what God has given us. So as we think about how we interact with the wider culture, we need to meet people where they are to appreciate the experiences that they have to appreciate the places in which they yearn for justice, for spirituality, for relationship, and where they see beauty. And rather than seeing ourselves in conflict with one another, see ourselves as guides and as fellow pilgrims as we come to understand and know the fullness of God that has been revealed to us in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate and suffered death and was buried. And the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world, especially St. Philip's in Ardmore and for Ardmore Village in Ardmore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us, especially for the birthdays of Karis Rutherford, Amelia Cooksey, Tony Brown, Daphne Denike, Emily Kellert, Abigail Mahoney, Paulette Bennett, Emily Meyer, Ellie Confer, Julia Richardson, Jeanne Bolley, Tracy Gallimore, Shelley Weisenberg, and for Gabrielle and Hannah Gordon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation, especially for Mia, Kathy, Robbie, Andrea, Wheeler, Misty, Bill, Caleb, Marilyn, John, Tori, Bill, Charles, Austin, Brett, Rich, Shirley, Jack, for those who have coronavirus, for those who are susceptible, and for the medical professionals. We pray for those who have lost their jobs or income. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We command you, we command to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that they may share with your, all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. There was a tradition in the early church that throughout the season of Easter, the confession of sin was omitted as a way of reminding ourselves of the vastness of God's love and grace and mercy for us. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, in a few moments, we're going to have just a couple of concluding prayers. Um, at this time, if you are able, I um, appreciate you to go uh, to uh, ChristChurchTulsa.org forward slash give to make an online gift as we continue uh, to uh, be faithful to the mission and ministry that God has placed before us. You can also text ChristChurchTulsa to 73256. If you are interested in the upcoming days, we're going to have uh, an opportunity to go deeper into understanding the Episcopal and Anglican tradition that we are a part of. And you can find those details um, either on social media or the Christ Church um, homepage. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now a prayer for spiritual communion. Let us pray. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, and remembering particularly my own parish, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by the life, death, and resurrection of and for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly the blessings that have been given to me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with my whole heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until, by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.